All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a very rainy morning. Today we're going to be talking about racism and uh, specifically how it uh, ties in with computer science. Um, we'll do a bit of background on racism and then uh, get into some examples where computer science uh, can be explicitly or uh, probably more often implicitly racist. You ready for the, the lecture? All right, let's do this. <laughs> All right, so there's uh, there's kind of three different definitions for racism, and um, the only thing they really have in, in common is that, you know, everyone who believes one of them is firmly convinced their definition is right and nobody else's is. So, um, uh, the, the first is, uh, the belief in the superiority of one race, right? So if you feel that white people are superior to black people, that's race. That's a fairly, fairly common, uh, definition, right? Uh, that, uh, you know, and, and then you can blame people for not succeeding because they're lazy, et cetera, et cetera. It's not your fault that they didn't succeed. It's their fault. And, uh. It makes for a very, uh, um, it makes for a very, uh, you know, easy excuse for not having to, to do anything to, to help another group of people. Um, and before we do this, we should probably talk about what race means. Um, so there's, there's also two competing terms. There's race and ethnicity. Does anyone know the difference between race and ethnicity. You know, we'll hear these term, terms kind of tossed about race and ethnicity. Ethnicity has to do with your roots. Yeah, they're both the same. Yeah, um, it depends what country you're in. So in countries like uh, the UK, race and ethnicity are terms that are used basically interchangeably. Um, in America, however, ethnicity means um, the country of origin of your family. So Hispanic is an ethnicity uh, if your family comes from Spain. And I'm not exactly sure how people are supposed to figure that out in the situations where, you know, your family isn't all from one country, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, you know, like my family, you know, my grandfather is a genealogist and um, if you go back far enough, like, our family is kind of like the United Nations, like you can, we have relatives in India and South Africa and Germany and Wales, like, you know, I don't know. It's like, I'm not exactly sure which one I'm supposed to pick. You know what I mean? So, but that's ethnicity. And, um, it sounds like the term is invented by people with a very simplistic view, you know, because like, I don't know. Reality is much more complicated usually than just, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, than just being from one one country, um, or that might just be my own personal you know, experience, you know, so that's ethnicity in America In other countries, race and ethnicity are used more or less interchangeably. Um, okay. So, and then race is basically, um, uh, well, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a second, but, uh, basically it's your skin color. So am I not streaming? You guys hearing okay good so there is for example in america the only ethnicity they put on the um, census is hispanic but you can be a white hispanic you can be black hispanic you can be native american hispanic and uh, so for example in cuba there's a lot of afro cubans and um, um and that's not a contradiction whereas in countries like the uk then that would be a contradiction to be both hispanic and white or Hispanic and black, um, because it's considered its own category, more or less.
And you have things like Judaism, which, you know, you can ask, is it a race? Is it a religion? Is it an ethnicity to be Jewish? And the answer is, um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Because <laughs> it's, it's, none of these are easy questions, by the way. Like, I don't, I don't really have easy answers for you for any of this stuff. Obviously, it's a very complex and sticky, sticky subject. Yeah, it, it is a it is a it is a religion, but um, there are atheist Jews, for example. I'm friends with some of them. I'm also friends with Orthodox Jews and Reformed Jews. I, I dated a girl for a while who was in training to be a rabbi. You know, it's, it's obviously not Orthodox. Um, it's it's complicated. So Judaism is referred to as an ethno religion. So it's both an ethnicity and a religion. But, um, you know, like there's Ashkenazi Jews and things like that. It, it, it gets, it gets really complicated, you know? And, and like I said, I, I don't really have, I don't really have a good, uh, I don't really have a good, you know, dividing line for you because you, there are atheist Jews out there because in Judaism, um, your status as a Jew comes from your mother, right? So even if you're an atheist, well, if your mom was a Jew, you're a Jew. Just how it is. And this matters if you're going to, like, go to Israel and immigrate to Israel, right? Because Israel has a policy, at least the last time I checked, of allowing Jews from anywhere in the world to move there. And so if your mom was a Jew, even if you're an atheist, uh, you can move to Israel. And in fact, uh, Israel had an atheist Jewish prime minister. Um, like, not a contradiction. And, you know... So... You know, it's it's just one of those things that, yeah. Okay, so racism. So, uh, three different definitions of racism. One is superiority of one race over another. One is individual acts of prejudice and discrimination, which is kind of the definition used, broadly speaking, by the right wing these days. For example, if, um, if somebody applies to your company and you're like, no, I'm not going to hire you because you're Asian, then that would be racism. It, according to sort of the right wing view of it, right? Um, you should give all people an opportunity equally, it doesn't matter their race or ethnicity or gender, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The best man or woman for the job should get the position. That's sort of the right wing view on racism these days. Um, the left sometimes straw mans the right into saying they're all racist, but it's because their definition of racism is different. So the left wing, broadly speaking, again, a lot of left wing people use one of the other definitions and vice versa. Uh, none of these are completely clean categories, but broadly speaking, the left wing considers racism to be systems that result in disparate outcomes. So if you have, um, if you have a school and the school graduates black kids at a lower rate than white kids, then that is a racist school. And, um, so, um, you know, you have to ask why, right? And, and so, you know, people who use the second definition here say, Hey, we give all of them an equal shot, but if your college is graduating people at wildly different rates, then maybe you're racist or you know, or if in, if you're, um, you know, in the left wing, you'd be like, yeah, it is racist. Like, it doesn't matter if you're individually, you know, nice to people of different races. If your school is flunking out all the black kids, your school's racist. And, um, you know, and it's your job to discover why. Why is, why is your school having disparate outcomes? And, you know, there's some questions, like, as far as, like, how how disparate it needs to be to be racist because you know stats are stats there's always noise and fluctuations and things like that in it um and um you know and so you know in in general i've seen people just say you know within kind of the statistical margin of error you know like it doesn't have to be exactly 15.1 percent for every race you know 
for anything. You know, like it doesn't all have to be exactly equal. As long as it's kind of in the general bar ballpark, you're good, which is a more reasonable way of doing it than expecting it to be exactly equal, which never happens because there's randomness, you know, in life, right? Um, and so, um, it's funny. Um, the other question that the left wing oftentimes has trouble with is like, what if the disparate outcomes are good for minority groups? You know, because, you know, the, the, not everything is always equal, you know, in, in the negative sense, like I talked about last week or the week before, you know, the Dominican Republic, if you look at their representation in Major League Baseball, it's much higher. And, you know, it's not due to racism as far as I can tell, um, you know, if we're using the um, second definition here or the first definition. It's simply because in the Dominican Republic, they have a system set up where kids have many, many opportunities to play baseball and to train during the off season, And they have pipelines for pitching schools and stuff like that. So there's culturally a different environment in the Dominican Republic that allows them to be way overrepresented based on percentage of population. And, you know, if you use the third definition here, that'd be, well, that's racism. It's like, I don't think many people would say it's racism for the Dominican Republic to be overrepresented in baseball. You know what I'm saying? Somewhat, somewhat. But, um, but I... The, the third definition does have issues where it ignores cultural factors, right? Individual and cultural factors get sort of neglected to only look at systematic factors. So, um, yeah, okay. So, uh, we've, we've had, uh, I don't know if this is going to come as a surprise to you, but America's had issues with racism, you know? <laughs> I don't know if this is like a groundbreaking news, but like, you know, colleges like Yale used to be really discriminatory. So the, uh, uh, you didn't know that? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble on this, but like, uh, Yale, um, the head of Yale said, never admit more than five Jews, two Italian Catholics and take no blacks at all. Right. So that would be an example of probably all three you know, that would be racism under all three categories. You know what I mean? Um, clearly the, uh, I think that was the president of Yale that said that. Uh, clearly uh, he thinks that uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, which is what he was, uh, was superior to these other groups here. And um, so that would be that bullet point definition of racism. Uh, it's clearly an act of prejudice and discrimination because you're not admitting somebody because of their race or religion in this case. And it's also very obviously a system with des disparate outcomes. They're not going to be graduating black people because they're not admitting any of them. Right. So, you know, it's quite blatantly racist. Like no, like nobody that I uh, know would have any issue saying that is a racist policy, you know? Um, that's racist. Yeah, exactly. Um, yo, what's Yale thinking? Yeah. So the, the really, uh, like, you know, and we'd be like, uh, you know, that's, you know, probably Yale back in the 1920s and thirties and things like that, you know, cause racism was <laughs> not, not great in America back then. Uh, but no, the, uh, the last class to discriminate against Jews was 1969, I believe somewhere around there. Like, you know, they had, a, they had a quota on Jews until almost the 1970s. You know, like, this is not, like, super ancient history. You know what I mean? And uh, in California, we didn't get rid of racial quotas until 1978 with the Bakke versus Board versus Education decision. Um, and so... Um, and then this, this most recent election, they were looking to reinstate racial quotas as a means of helping... Um, African Americans specifically. So to guarantee that the UC system would admit equal amounts of people. And um, so that's, you know, modern, you know, this last year, you know, this last election. So, um, you know, it's obviously still a very controversial issue, you know. 
because if if the UC system is not admitting, because right now what we have in in California is we have race blind admissions. Uh, uh, race and ethnicity are not allowed to be considered as a factor in college admissions, and um, well, you know the the situation is that we're not admitting people equally of all ethnicities. And so the notion is, all right, let's bring back racial quotas and be like, all right, if, if California is, you know, 20% in this race, then we have to admit exactly 20% into the UC system and fix, uh, essentially the problem caused by the K-12 system, right? So by the time you get to college, like you've had 13 years of K-12, right? And there's issues with our K-12 system. I've, I've worked, um, I, I, I went down to one of the poorest areas of San Diego, which is predominantly black. And I, I think every student in my program was black. And we did history with them, you know, for, uh, we were basically beta testing a, a, a software product, but you know, the, the kids got a free after school history program and you know, seeing how the education system worked in really poor areas is eye-opening. You know, the, the teachers would yell at the kids, sit down, shut up, you know. Like, that's, you know, the, the kids were in, like, fifth grade and already burned out. They had that burned out look of, like, a high school senior, you know. It's like, damn, dude, you're not supposed to hate school until at least middle school. <laughs> um, you know. It's like kids, you know, like, you know, I've, I've worked, you know, I, I worked in education for a long time and, you know, elementary school kids were like, usually like, yay, school, you know, we do finger painting and stuff like that. And these kids like hated school, you know, and normally you don't see that till middle school, you know, I don't want to be here anymore, you know? And, um, and yeah, it's, there's very big, you know, systematic issues, you know, um, there's issues with this definition, you know, but there are actually big systematic issues. And it's, it's oftentimes not what people think. It's not a matter of money, you know. Like, look look here in, in uh, Clovis and Fresno. Clovis Unified School District. The teachers aren't even un union, right? Clovis, Clovis School District teachers aren't union. They get paid far less than the Fresno schools. You know, you can step across, um, you know, you can drive a mile south and go from Clovis School District to Fresno School District and make a lot more money but teachers prefer to work in the Clovis school district, you know? And so it's not a matter of money. Like the, the average salary for people and like, because they have to incentivize teachers to, to work there, you know, they offer them bonuses and things like that. It's not a matter of money. That's not the issue. That's what they always say. Cause they always want more money. You know, if you just give us more money, then it's not, it's not a matter of money, you know? But, um, yeah, and the, like there is there is a very serious, you know, issue with uh, with our K twelve works, and so the notion was let's bring back racial quotas to um, to fix that, you know, and to a person who uses the third definition, that would be like yeah, we're that's an anti racist, prop you know proposition to equalize the admission into college, and you know, and presumably you could pass the thing saying you have to graduate exactly the proper proportion as well. Um, you know, I've been to workshops, so they're like, well, think about if you really want to fail a student or not, you know, like, how are you going to... And I'm like, if somebody doesn't show up in my class, they're getting failed. Because literally that's the only way they can fail my class is if they just don't... Like, all you guys got to do is come to Discord and just, like, post SpongeBob memes. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's kind of hard to fail this class. Sure, the midterms could be kind of kind of tricky but other than that like you, you kind of have to work hard to not succeed at csi one you know what i mean like just post one meme yeah you know what i mean you know what i mean so like you know and they're like well you should think about you know do you really need to fail your students and i'm like yeah i'm gonna like if somebody doesn't show up why on earth would i pass them you know what i mean so um that's how you'll pass the class yeah Discord chat is uh, hilarious right now. Um, but to people who use the second definition, racial quotas are quite racist. 
right? Because you're you're giving preference to one race over another. And uh, this proposition uh, to overturn Bakke, Bakke, um, was very heavily opposed by Asian groups. And uh, historically, in in California, you know, the Asian population has been sort of quiet politically. Like when, um, you know, you're like, sorry, you can't send your kids to Berkeley. Like there were protests in the street of, of Los Angeles. I was down there, you know, and they, they got mad, you know, cause like they, you know, you know, as there is a cultural difference, you know, the, my wife taught at a cram school, you know, where, you know, you get out of school and then they send their kids to more school, you know, and they post up on the wall. All the kids got a 1600 on their SAT. You get your portrait put up there. Like it's, it's, a, it's an actual thing. There's actual cultural differences and they got mad. And, and so that, that proposition got voted down for that. So, um, yeah. And then uh, governor Newsom has uh, introduced quotas, racial quotas for corporate boards. So 30% of people on a, uh, on a corporation, a board of directors for a large corporation must be from an underrepresented group. So, yeah, whether or not that is anti-racist or racist depends on your definition of the word. So that's why it's important to talk about these definitions, because usually people will just talk right past one another. Like, that's racist. No, it's not. It's anti-racist. No, it's racist. You're, you're, you're hiring somebody just because they're black. That's racist. No, it's anti-racist because we're trying to even the, you know, and, and like they just, there's no conversation possible because they're using de different definitions for the word. Okay, so, uh, let me minimize my face. So, the view of humanity having racism, races, uh, you're talking about ethnicities and someone says you're racist. Yeah, you're like, no, no, no. I'm ethnicist. <laughs> right? Like, we use the term racist to refer to somebody. Like, if you, if you discriminate against somebody because they're Hispanic, we'd say that's racist, even though. Um, it's discrimination against ethnicity because we don't really have a word for discriminating against ethnicity because definitions are stupid. <laughs> so if you look at, if you look at the literature from a hundred years ago, if you look at the literature from 1920, you will, you will see the concept of the five colors of mankind, uh, used, uh, sometimes there's six, uh, but the five colors of, of mankind. And here's, here's a helpful illustration from racists a uh, hundred years ago. So you got the red skinned people, which doesn't look very red to me, that are the Native Americans or Indians. There's Asians, um, there's whites, uh, blacks, and Malay, which is kind of like what we'd call Pacific Islanders and such nowadays. And um, and you, you can tell it's racist because, you know, the white people have like, you know, skyscrapers and the black people are, you know, <laughs> you know, clear, you know, the white people are front and center. You know, you can clearly see the, the views of the person who made this illustration. Um, the thing is, though, like uh, human, human, humanity doesn't actually have races. So, yeah, the, the sixth one is Smurf, right? Yeah, that's somebody that, that has um, silver poisoning. So there's a. Uh, if you if you uh, dose yourself with uh, colloidal silver, it'll actually turn your skin silver permanently. Like there's no there's no fix in that. So um, sometimes uh, silver miners will get will get that. Yeah. So um, it doesn't sound healthy. Yeah, silver's not actually um, it's not like lead or something like that. But yeah, it definitely doesn't look good. Yeah, but some people will take silver as like a supplement or something like, I don't know. It seems like a bad idea to me, but some people will do it. Um, yeah, so a race in biology is a group, like if you have dogs or whatever, like a group that breed with each other is a race. And uh, yeah, th that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, basically humanity with you know, the only difference is, is really the skin color, right? Skin color and, you know, there's some differences in like eye shape and, and you know, facial morph morphology and things like that. 
basically, yeah, you, you can have sex with people with different skin colors. It's fine. You know, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing that. And, um, and so the notion that humanity has different races is itself racist. Um, because when you use the term race to refer to different skin colors, the meaning of race is that those are groups that should only stick to, you know, being with each other. You know, so when you say, what race are you? You know, that's, there is a frame that is the group that you're going to breed with, you know, from a, you know, that's, that's what it means. And so there's this implicit, like the term racism is itself racist, you know, because there's an implicit frame in it that says these groups should stick together and they shouldn't marry outside of the groups. Because again, this whole thing comes from a hundred years ago. And if you look at the stats from a hundred years ago, it was very common to say, yeah, white people shouldn't marry black people, you know, black people shouldn't marry white people, you know, like that was a very common racist view a hundred years ago. Now it's not like, you know, it's below the statistical significance level at this point. Um, uh, didn't he have an identity crisis? Who's that? Um, what are you? An idiot sandwich. That's funny. Um, yeah. And, and so like, I, I don't like even using the term race to refer to people with different skin colors because, you know, again, that that's establishing a frame that that group should just stick to themselves and, not, you know, so. there's no good, there's no good alternative term though. So. Uh, the United Nations rejects the term, there are races of humanity. All human beings belong to a single species and are descended from a common stock. Uh, we are born equal in dignity and rights and all form an integral part of humanity. So the United Nations has said there are no races, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just a very, you know, you know, like from a scientific perspective, there are no races of humanity. You know, we can interbreed. There's no, there's no issues there. Okay. Um, yeah. Do people with different skin colors have different experiences? Yeah. You know, and so, you know, there's, there, but there's no good alternative term for race or racism and things like that. So, you know, you know, it's one of those things The the definitions on this subject are, are sticky. They're, they're tough. Um, yeah, so race refers to one of the five colors of humanity and the notion itself is you know, problematic as they would say, ethnicity is country of origin. Um, and in, in America, the only ethnicity that is surveyed, like I said, is, is Hispanic. So you can be a white Hispanic and a black Hispanic and things like that. Um, yeah. And, and then in the UK, ethnicity includes country of origin. So it's nice and confusing. Um, also the categorization of ethnicities into races, like what does it mean to be white? Like I've, I've attended lectures on the shifting definition of whiteness over the years, right? Jewish people used to not be white hundred years ago, 1900 Jewish people were Jewish. They were not white. And now Jews are generally considered white and Italians were not considered white they're considered brown skinned and now they're considered white you know and um it's the these terms these terms shift over the years it's not really hard and fast rules for them um a hundred years ago white generally referred to like white anglo-saxon protestants from england as their ethnicity you know and maybe the french or something like that you know but like german also you know but like italians uh eh, you know Irish, eh, you know, so, um, you in a sticky situation, use a fallacy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> use your powers for good, not for evil. Okay. So, uh, the good news is the good news is, and I, I don't want this talk to be completely depressing. The good news is, is that the, if you look at the stats, all the stats are, are like pretty significantly changing. So if you looked, uh, you know, 60 years ago, uh, the amount of people that supported interracial marriages was like 5%. Right. It's like, you know, I asked my grand, my grandfather who was a very nice guy and loved everybody. I'm like, Hey, you know, were, were you guys actually racist back then? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, what the hell grandpa, you know? And I was like, 
R- really? Because like he, like I never heard my grandfather say a racist thing in his life. He's like, yeah, yeah, a, race, a black person would come to our town uh, after dark. We'd chase him out of town. I was like, what the hell? Why? He's like, I don't know. It's, that's just how things were back then, you know. But his, but his views changed. You know, the the civil rights movement of the sixties uh, changed his mind, and he's, um, he's like, yeah, okay, I was wrong. And I was like, all right, I respect that, but what the, <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Damn, dude. Uh, um, yeah, but I mean, there's pretty good odds your grandparents or great grandparents. I don't know how old you guys are. Um, there's a 95% chance they were opposed to interracial marriage back then, right? And now nowadays the you know the 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 support for these things are so high that like they just stop surveying them. But the University of Chicago has been tracking these attitudes towards different issues and racism over the years, and it's you know it, it's all gotten better you know uh, should white kids and black kids go to the same school you know it's like yeah back then nah now yeah you know should there be laws against interracial marriage and this is actually interesting so even even in a time period where like you know very few people actually would be like yeah it's okay americans aren't really um uh as big on government as like people in other countries. I don't know if you guys know about this, but Americans, there's kind of been a long history of distrust towards government in America. Kind of like, uh, started, that's funny. Uh, American, you know, the, the American government sort of started as a result of people being very deeply suspicious of, of Britain, you know? And, and so there's been this long running theme in America of like, um, yeah, what I think isn't as important as I don't want the government to mandate it. You know what I mean? There's always busybodies that want the government to mandate their their particular brand of morality on other people, but you can look at this gap, right? So this the blue line here is people who are opposed to interracial marriage, and the yellow are the people who want um, laws, right? Who want a law against it, and so even in a time period where let's say fifteen uh, percent of people supported interracial marriage. Um, you know, three times that number, two times that number, um, opposed laws against it. You know what I mean? So there's always been this gap between like what I think and what I think the government should do, which is very interesting to me. So, uh, sorry, not University of Chicago, University of Illinois. Um, and so this is actually a, um, a very interesting webpage. I'll post the link for you. Um. You can, you can pull up stats and things like that if you're curious about it. Um, stereotypes. Uh, it's interesting that they've sort of leveled off since about the year 2000 or so. Um, whites are richer. is not a false stereotype, by the way. On, on average, the median income of whites is higher and the um, wealth of whites is higher also. Uh, wealth is how much money you have in your bank account, so to speak. Includes all of your assets minus your, your debts. Um, but what's interesting is that the amount of people who will say that whites are richer has actually fallen over time, which is, uh, inaccurate, right? Uh, but they, I, I think people just don't want to, don't want to say it, right? So, um, but the, the notion that whites work harder and are more intelligent. And by the way, it's, it's important to note also that racism isn't just white versus black. A lot of people fall into that trap. It's a mental frame, right? It's a mental frame that racism is purely a question of white people versus black people. And I attended a, um, a, a bunch of classes at Duke um, in the spring semester, and they fell into that trap all the time. Even though they had a, they gave a little thing like, well, you know, there's issues that, you know, Hispanics, you know, and, you know, Asian people have. Like, they, it was very much like, their, you can see their mindset was white versus black. And, um, and yeah, it, it like, it's it's a, it's an issue. It's that that frame is actually an issue that causes problems, like real problems. I submitted a grant. A grant is uh, when you ask the government to you know give you money for stuff. Um, I yeah, and, and then yeah, like in the in the Bay Area, there have been attacks on Asian people, right? And you know the whole stop AAPI, uh, AAPI hate 
uh, thing over the last year. It's because, like, the racism against Asian people has been sort of ignored, right? Because if, if your mental frame is racism is purely a matter of white versus black, then if somebody um, walks around Chinatown in San Francisco robbing, you know, uh, elderly Chinese people, which is what's been happening, um, especially during Chinese New Year, where people are carrying lots of um, Hong Bao, uh, the red pocket, um, lucky, lucky money, um, then it gets swept under the rug. It's not, you know, it's not talked about. It's not part of the national conversation. And so, anyway, so I wrote this grant for um, Calexico. Do you guys know where Calexico is here in California? Got a geography question for you. I didn't sign up for this. So, Calexico is um, Cal, California, Mexico, Mexico. It's right across the border from Mexico. And if the California town is called Calexico, what do you think the Mexican town is called? Mexicali. Yeah, you got it. So you have Calexico and Mexicali. Let's take the name and, and do this. So it's, it's one of the big border crossings, um, incidentally. And uh, Calexico, as you can imagine, has a very high percentage of Hispanic, right, uh, population. It's 95% uh, Hispanic, something like that. The um, um, uh, number of English language learners, things like that, it's very high. And so we wrote this grant. And the grant requires you to talk about race and ethnicity in the grant and to talk about racial disparities and what you're going to do to help fix them and stuff like that. So I'm like, yo, we're going to like boost the Eng English language program, you know, and have, um, cause I, I worked a lot with history. And so we're going to have, uh, people who specialize in, cause it's hard to study history if your English skills aren't good. Right. Does that make sense? Like, you know, if you have to sit down and read a history textbook, if your English skills aren't up to par, it's really, it, it, it's hard. It's an actual barrier. It's a, you know, like, you know, if you talk about the definition, you know, it's a, it's a system that results in disparate outcomes. If you, you know, and so we're like, we'll bring in these, these people with PhDs in education and, and doctorates in history and present ways, um, to either boost the English levels or to, um, teach history in such a way that they can still learn the history because, you know, that's what you, that's what we wanted was we wanted people to be educated. Hey, it's a weird, weird concept. And the grant got rejected and the grant got rejected because I didn't talk about race, race and ethnicity. I was the only, that was the only negative. And the person was obviously very offended that I did not talk about race and ethnicity in this grant. And I was like, What? <laughs> like the entire grant was identifying this problem because it is like history is a very text heavy field. Like go home and read a chapter from your textbook. You know, there is a real problem and a real problem that we were solving with experts being flown in from around the world. And you didn't fund me because I didn't talk about the one thing that I talked about. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Except I didn't say the word hell. And, um, and then I realized like, oh, I didn't, I didn't talk about black people because the person reading it is probably from the East coast and the East coast race means white versus black. And so it was a mental frame and it, it, you know, it, it's, yeah, sure. It didn't, it didn't, you know, hurt me, you know, economically. But if you think about all the kids that would have benefited from that program over five years, it was a five year program. Um, Right. All those people missed out on it, right? Because of this mental frame, you know? And so it, it pisses me off. It really does. Because um, there's there's a lot of problems in our world, and if you, like, try to reduce things just down to a simplistic view, um, you know, you can, you know, that and that person was probably very well-meaning. They just didn't even realize the fact they have blinders on. They have goggles that allow them to only see the world in terms of like one issue, you know? So, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, another interesting stat from that, 
a website is the difference in perception between um, uh, whites and blacks, because again, this how they view the survey, that's how they view it. Um, the view of if blacks are treated fairly by police. So uh, black people have a 77% rate saying they're treated unfairly by police. White people have it at about half the rate, but notably higher than the other things, right? So white people, you know, are like, yeah, yeah. you know, that, 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 that does happen, you know? And, but the other things are down here. It's interesting they're all clustered kind of together, the black respondents here, and they're clustered here, and they're about half also. That's around 50. No, that's, a, that's even lower than half, right? So there's definitely a difference in perception from white people and black people as to how black people are treated, you know? But both of them think that the police treat black people worse than um, the, um, you know, restaurants and on the job and things like that. So, um funny <laughs> yeah um yeah and like all my black friends have been pulled over for driving while black you know so like you know i i don't, I don't think this survey is wrong you know either, either just from my own personal anecdotal experience with you know just talking to my friends about it like uh, one of my one of my buddies, um, like we talk quite often, and he was pulled over uh, on the way to college. And uh, after they realized he was a UNLV student, they let him go. You know, so you know it's yeah. Can you prove that the cop was being racist by just pulling somebody over for a traffic stop? You know, no, can't. But it's highly suspicious. You know. Uh, not for dressing black, for being black. It's called driving while black. And um, where cops will pull over people, uh, like Will Smith got pulled over, right? He was a, a black guy in a nice car in L.A., gets pulled over by the cops, tasks them, like, oh, it's Will Smith. Hey, have a great day, buddy. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. And you, you can see the, the problem is considered quite prevalent. Um, yeah, all right, so, yeah, so black and white, yeah, so this is called black and white thinking, actually, is the, is the, there, there is a term for this, um, when you, when you, when you boil down a complicated problem into just, uh, something like this, you know, yeah, so Calexico, yeah, yeah, 99% Hispanic, 80%, 86% low income, 65% English learners, we didn't get it. Other, other issues of um, racism in the past, Chinese Exclusion Act against Chinese people, obviously, it's in the name, well, ended in, in 1952. <laughs> like, you know, this, this, again, this is not ancient history. The Chinese Exclusion Act basically prohibited immigration from China. So, uh, yeah, the Japanese internment camps, uh, you know, Fred Korematsu, who was a, um, the, uh, the guy who brought the lawsuit, um, and he, he actually was involved in the civil rights movement even after World War II. Like, he was involved in, uh, um, uh, later adult life, continued fight racism. Yeah, I apologize for the internet, yeah. So, yeah, the Chinese Exclusion Act allowed Chinese missionaries and diplomats to convert. Basically, though, outlawed um, Chinese immigration because, um, well, a guy by the name of Kearney, not me, not a relative, I, as far as I can tell, um, thought there were too many Chinese in San Francisco and things like that. So, um, you know, the Chinatown in San Francisco actually predates 1882. So there, there are people in Chinatown that have been there since the gold rush. Their families have been there since the gold rush. You know, my family didn't come over uh, mostly until like the 1880s and 1890s. So you know, the people in Chinatown, have, you know, their families have been in America longer than, than my family has, you know. So, um, yes, yeah. Um, in Japan, uh, we had a gentleman's agreement with Japan to reduce immigration to America. Um, same thing. Uh, Americans thought, or some Americans thought, there are too many Japanese coming to America. 
So they restricted immigration from Japan. Um, yeah, Japanese internment is obviously a huge issue. We had an internment camp here in Pinedale. And uh, the Japanese gardens uh, do exhibits from time to time on Japanese internment. And, um, you know, George Takai, who was uh, Sulu on Star Trek, he was uh, in an internment camp when he was a kid. Um, we're basically, we're like, because you're Japanese, you're going to go to jail. And um, they created an exclusion zone over basically the West Coast. And any Japanese person living in the exclusion zone was sent to uh, essentially jail. You couldn't leave, you know. And, uh, um, and so Japanese people sold off their businesses and things like that. And because everyone was selling... The price plummeted and, you know, basically people lost their, their livelihoods and things like that, you know, sold their cars at pennies on the dollar and stuff like that. It was really, you know, one of America's, um, low marks, you know, uh, it's not just America. It's, e it's easy to beat up America, by the way. Uh, so Australia, um, Australia for the Australians, you know, white Australia, like, they're, they're, you know, it's not an American problem. And, and we like to really beat up America and say it's just an America. Like, America is the worst, most racist country in the world. Uh, I got news for you. <laughs> like, there's racism. <laughs> you, know, you know, go to the Balkans, you know. <laughs> you know there's, uh, there's, there's, there's issues all around the, the globe, you know. And so uh, the white Australia policy um, was to forbid, starting in 1901, and... Um, lasting until 73, you know, like, again, this is not ancient history. And, um, yeah, a lot of Chinese immigrated to Australia. And nowadays, you know, there's all sorts of conflict going on between Australia and China as well. Uh, France is really racist. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. I, I went to France uh, two years ago and my taxi driver uh, was just ranting about all these uh, black immigrants that were in town. He's like, oh, they're all lazy. They don't have jobs. And you know, get a job, you know, and he'd honk at them, like, ah, get out of here, you know. He's, like, super racist, and, and the dude was black. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right. Um, I just kind of sat there the whole time. Um, yeah, he, he, was, he had, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was just kind of just sitting there like, okay. Interesting. Yeah, he was, he was a black French dude. He was sitting there yelling at all the black people, saying they're all lazy and they don't work and they're taking their jobs and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I don't know what's happening here, but, you know, I'm going to use this in my CSI 1 class. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, the British people say they aren't racist. They ask them their opinion on people from Romania. Yeah, or, or on the Romani. Yeah. Uh, you know, who they call gypsies. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, I believe in peace and tolerance, except for that group. You know? Yeah, racism is, is a global problem. Like, it's not it's not just America. And, and, and all these attempts to, like, be like, yeah, America is the only racist country. It's the most racist country. It's like, you know, look at, look at, the, look at the stats. Like, it's, you know, it's still a problem. It's not... We're, we're not alone. Okay. And it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things. Okay, so... We're at 1050. So today, today we just did a, a, a broad overview on racism, and then on uh, on Wednesday we'll talk about computer science and racism. Okay, now different programs. We we talked a little bit last time about um, facial recognition and Jalomoy's work and stuff like that. So we'll we'll pick that up on Wednesday. Um, just do a little simple quiz. The um, the discussion group, the discussion thing. Uh, you should be assigned two peer reviews to do, so go ahead and do those. You got one week from today to do those. So do your peer reviews. If you didn't do the uh, um, the discussion board, then you don't get peer reviews. So sorry. Um, wait, wait, what? Uh, we weren't supposed to reply to others yesterday. You can. I mean, you know, nothing's stopping you. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, if you, if, when you go onto the discussion section, there's a button there where you click on, it, it, it gives you peer reviews today. Like you can reply to other people, but you, you have to reply to your peer reviews. So, so it'll give you two people 
and just reply to him. Use the hamburger method, say something nice. Then if you have any criticism, then say something nice. So being nice and polite to each other is really important in this class, uh, even if you have to disagree. And that's, that's um, a very important skill to learn, too. Makes you sad? Why? You, yeah, double work is good for you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah and, and you do have a week from, from today to do it. So. Um, it doesn't matter which person you respond to. Yeah, you have to respond to the person you uh, got a peer review for. And and the reason for that is to make sure that everybody gets gets um, peer reviews. So it creates a sense of community and involvement and and if you did extra ones, then good on you. But uh, you got to you got to do your two your two peer reviews that they were assigned fifty minutes ago. Yep. Could have worked on something else. Yeah. That's fair enough. Fair enough. I, I I applaud your diligence. I applaud your diligence. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Um. So there's that, and then uh, Zybooks was due uh, today at ten as well. Uh, so I'll probably put up uh, another side books uh, to just be on the lookout for that. And um, yeah, and then I'll see you guys on, on Wednesday. Right. Peace out.